Here's your video for timing your chains back up. Your rim currently is in the out position, just like this mock-up. You're gonna to wanna to support the bottom of the room with a jack and a two by four. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I was telling you about putting on the purple out bracket on the right hand side of the motor. Go all the way up on the chain to the link open right before the sprocket. Put a zip tie in there and mark that. From that point, you can go ahead and disassemble all your chains on the box. You can leave your cables right where they're at. You can just loosen up on the chain nut. That's the 7 16 on the back side. Same with your end, loosen the chain knot. That's a 7 16 in the middle of the cables. comes apart that's all right keep your fingers clear of that sprocket area screwdriver works really well poke that chain through go ahead and hook that back up just to where you don't lose anything let that rest on top of the box do the same to your other side now Watch for the cable sticking out on a cable repair. Same with your end bracket. Break that chain nut loose. them up completely until you can get the chain off of the sprocket of the motor. At this point your box is just sitting in the hole. Jack's the only thing supporting it. Set that on top of your box. Remove all the fasteners in the motor. Put the 22307 that we shipped out to you back in its original location. That's the first motor you originally took off. Lock it back down. With your fasteners, there should be, on that one, I believe four, four or five fasteners. Once you've done this, before you reinstall your chains that go to that right side, this is the chain connector I was telling you on the out bracket. Measure from the back side to where your zip tie or the mark you used on your chain. For an example only, we'll say it's six inches. Go back over to your left side out bracket. Measure from the back side down to where you have six inches. Put a zip tie in there. This is going to ensure that when we put the chains back on, we stop that zip tied area, one link shy right here of the sprocket, it's gonna make sure both sides are timed. And we can double check this in a minute and ensure that everything's done properly. You're ready to hook the chains back up, then we'll, you can get into your cable repairs. Right side's gonna go on first. Left side, we wanna go on last. Left side allows the chain to be up on the top of the double sprocket gives you more room in behind that motor to ensure that nothing's going to hit and collide again. Locate your zip tie, wrap that around the sprocket, make sure it's nice and tight around that sprocket. 
You'll have that zip tie on your left hand side chain. You know, locate that. That'll be right at that first opening before the sprocket. Set those on. Ensure that the cables that you do have on this side that aren't broke or damaged, everything's running nice and parallel. The outs and the ends, they're not wrapped or twisted around one another. This is where you can go ahead and double check from the back side of the chain connector to the center of the sprocket. Uh, here I have four and a half. I want to make sure out bracket chain connector that I have four and a half on this side. I have five and a half. You'll see this in your zip tie too. It'll be off. You want to match them. So if I need to jump that around, I can until I have five and a half, just like the right side, because the right side was correct. Give myself a little more slack. I can do that by taking out on the chain or on the cables. I'll do that on the chain. Gives me a little extra slack to jump this chain around on that sprocket until I get my five and a half centered again. So now I have five and a half from the chain connector to the center of the sprocket. On the other out bracket on the other side of the motor, I've got five and a half inches here as well. Now everything's timed for my outs. Leave my ends completely loose. Drive my out chains in. you can get in there with a drill and a socket with like a, a 3 8 adapter you can do that as well just be careful tighten up that tension on there remember your top out cable is missing it broke loose you're gonna want to change that bracket out before you start this process too because you're going to need a new bracket on that out and that in. So once you've done that, tighten up all that tension, take most of it out of the chain, where hopefully you won't have to add too much to the cables at all. Do the same to the other side. Outs is what you're starting with first. If you can finger snug most of that slack up, you can. And then start tightening down with the wrench or a socket. Running out of steam. <laughs> Once I got that fairly tight, <clears throat> I can adjust the right hand side. The left hand side, the top should still be touching, the jack support and everything. Um, just ensure that all four brackets are up against it. You're your top out, even though that cable broke, gravity and weight alone of the box is already helping seal that top. So it's probably touching. From there, you can grab a pair of needle nose pliers, take out your rubber grommet, remove your cable from the bracket, and you can replace that particular cable that was damaged, which is that uh, top out cable, which is in the bottom of your out bracket. Once you have that replaced, put enough tension on your eye bolt, just like this replacement here, to where it's just enough holding it and the cable's not real super loose there. Tighten up the tension between the chain and both cables until about a fist or so back from the end of the eye bolts or studs, you just about pinch them together. That's more than enough and that the bottom bracket and top bracket on each side are touching. Same thing here. This is a little tighter, but both brackets are touching. You're good. Once all your out cables are done and everything's sealing up, now you can go to your ends, take up the majority of the slack on your chains to leave as much cable as, as possible to make an adjustment with later on. All you're doing is kind of hand snugging everything up a little bit and getting all the slack out of the system.
If you have any cables to replace on that end bracket, you can do so at this time. Cable changes and adjustments are all done with the loom in the fully sealed position. Once that's completed, your outs are tight first. Everything's sealing, slack's taken up out of your ends. You need to do a quick stretching process. Make sure that there's no slack left in the system on that room. How you're gonna do this is you're going to, you're in the out position, remember your jack and your two by underneath, lower the room back down, cycle and bump the room in about two inches or so. And back out, back in, back out, Back in, back out, three times. Now do one full cycle all the way in. Once that room's all the way in, do the same thing. In and out, three cycles, and then all the way back out. The whole time, you're watching these brackets. Make sure they're not catching and colliding with one another. Once you've done that, go back to your outs. You're finished with those. You shouldn't have to touch them again. This little jam nut right here on the chain adjustment, make sure that that's locked down tight. You can do that with the open end, 7 16 Squeeze it tight, straight, nice and uniform with the chain. Same with the right side. Now take up the remaining slack on your ends. What you're looking for is a half inch of play in the cable, half inch up, half inch down. You can do this individual cables. From, these are the ones on the outside of the coach, or you can do it adding tension to both cables at the same time by adding chain tension. I'm gonna do this with the chain tension. Take up some of this slack. until both of my cables on that side of the room, I can pick up and push down a half inch without the cable staying slack when I pull on it. As long as I can do that and the cable's not drooping or sagging on you, you're good to go. Check your top and bottom on that side. Once you're where you need to be, make sure your jam nut is nice and tight up against that bracket. You can squeeze it together. On the back side, smash all that and lock it in place, or like I said, with the open end on that nut. What you do see is my chain is not uniform. Nice pair of needle nose clamping pliers. Hang on to the chain, get on the back nut. I'm gonna drive the wrench up, hang on to the bracket, and straighten everything out. Now everything's nice and uniform. That side's complete. Go to my in on the left hand side. Take up my slack on it. I'm gonna do it evenly again on the chain. Get a half inch up, half inch down on the cable on the outside. You don't have to go outside of the coach, check this. Bottom and top are doing the same thing, half inch up, half inch down, no droop or sag. Run my jam nut tight to my adjustment bracket. Open end wrench. You can get in there and tighten that up. If it's getting stuck on you, tighten it up and smash it together on the back side. Once again, make sure your chain's nice and uniform. Need those pliers, grab the chain, pull down this time, pull the bracket to it, and straighten everything out. Very last thing you're gonna do is those anti-vibration foam blocks. They're gonna have a little punch out in the center. Your new blocks that you have, it'll still be there. As soon as you poke it over it, that little tab's gonna fall out. Shove it and wedge it all the way back into your cable adjustment brackets. Top and bottom, all four cable adjustment brackets. Every stud should have one of those on it. That's going to ensure that your adjustments stay where they were, right where you put them, and they're not going to loosen up on you later on down the road. Any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.